Hey everyone, in this episode I'm going to teach you how I built this bad boy flickering lantern here with a little inspiration from Drunken and Dragons. So strap in, here we go. As I mentioned before, I got my inspiration uh, for this project from Hankerin on Drunken and Dragons. Uh, they had an episode on how to uh, create flickering light torches. Um, so we have just a tea light here from the dollar store. Um, take off the top and just familiarize yourself with the way that the mechanism works. Um, we're going to use this as the base for our lantern. Here I'm just laying down some guides uh, so that I can trim the excess on the base off with my utility knife. Um, trying to keep a nice rectangular shape on the base for the crate, for the footprint of the crate rather. And here I'm just measuring up the top of the crate. Um, I want to allow on the sides, you can see some clearance for um, the balsa wood that I'll be using for the sides as well. I'm just going to mark it off. I have these um, extra thick popsicle sticks or tongue depressors just from your local craft store. As you've probably seen in the rest of my tutorials, um, I like to add wood grain to my balsa wood. It just gives a bit more of a worn effect and a real wood feel. And so I'm just doing that with my uh, sculpting tool here. Now this part here is a little tricky. I'm trying to match up the hole for where I'm going to drill out an area so that the LED pops through the top of the crate. So I'm just roughly making a guide with my pencil. Next I'm just going to use a pin vise to drill out the hole. Um, rather you do that than a, an electrical uh, drill, obviously just because of the torque and the power. Uh, this is much more delicate. And obviously this hole isn't big enough, so I'm going to just uh, put it back in and work it around. I then had to go in with my utility knife again even to enlarge it a bit more. But just dry fit it and test it until, until it gets through nice and easy. And 
then once the uh, top is secure around your LED and in the spot that you want, just add a healthy uh, doll up there of uh, hot glue just to make sure that it sticks nice and nice and good. Here I'm just getting the rest of the extra thick popsicle stick and I'm marking off the side pieces for the crate. Again, careful when you're cutting uh, these because they tend to snap. I actually had to go in and reattach them a little bit with the hot glue afterwards. Um, just make sure you're using a nice sharp knife or decent shears. Then with the uh, front of the crate, or the area where the switch is, I'm just gonna cut a smaller uh, stir stick slash uh, popsicle stick, craft stick, <laughs> as it were, uh, to the front to build out that area there. I'm just gonna mark it there, I'm gonna snip it, and then I'm gonna use hot glue to affix it. Next, I'm just going to uh, first create my wood texture on, on these next uh, lengths of craft stick. And then I'm going to split them in half because um, otherwise it's a bit too thick for what I'm looking for. But this is basically just going to create the frame of a crate um, that you typically see in, in real world crates. Just gonna put a line of hot glue on here and then attach the length of stick down nice and quick so it adheres. Wait for it to dry a little bit. And I like to uh, scrape off the glue before it dries. It tends to come off any excess glue that's stuck out the sides. And then I'm just gonna get my snips and I'm gonna snip off the excess and continue to use the rest of that stick for the frame.
the di diagonal reinforcements. Um, I'm going to grab again those half sticks. I'll cut out a bit of an arrowhead or an angled section off the end of the stick so that it fits snugly in one side. Then I'm going to put it on the crate, measure it, and then mark the other side, cut that. And then using a glue gun, I'm going to uh, attach it in the center area. And I'm going to do that systematically around the rest of the crate as well. Once all the trim on one side is done, I'm going to go ahead and grab my sculpting tool and I'm going to add that wood texture along those lengths as well. Here I'm just trimming off the excess on that jet out. Originally I was going to do a smaller crate that attached to the side, but I wanted something that added a bit more texture, or a different texture rather. So I'm going to add sacks uh, on the side of this. Um, just every once in a while as well I check to make sure that the uh, switch still works and that the light turns on and off. And to build up the sack area, I. Uh, Put a healthy little dab of hot glue, making sure it doesn't touch the switch mechanism. And then just added a little um, chunk of insulation foam there, just to create that shape of the sack that I'm looking for. Again, testing the light. I'm just going to add some white glue all in that area, again avoiding the, the switch mechanism to make sure it doesn't stick. And I'm just going to cover it with a healthy layer of white glue around the sides and then just around the inside rim of the bottom. Then just like I did for the sheets in the uh, soldier bunk episode, I'm going to wet paper towel, this time both plies. I'm not going to separate the two plies. I'm going to use both because I'd like the bag to be a bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to straighten out that piece and I'm going to lay it over the sack area. Work it into the corners and then cover it as well with some uh, more white glue.
At this point, I felt like I needed maybe a second sack to cover that little gap on the side there to add some more volume to that side. So what I did is I just uh, created a little chunk of pink insulation foam again to create the contents of the second little bag or sack. And I'm just randomly pulling off little chunks here. Test fitting it, see how I like it. Then I'm going to wrap the little chunk of foam in uh, more paper towel until I'm happy kind of with the texture that's there. Once again, test fit it. Make sure I like how it sits with the other one. And then I'm going to wrap a little piece of string got this twine type string, very fine, from the dollar store. And I'm just gonna tie it around it, create a bit of a, a knot here, and then use a little dollop of hot glue to stop it from unraveling. And I'm going to give this uh, sack a healthy layer again of white glue. I added a little bit of water just to make it flow a bit better, but you don't want to saturate it too much with water. I'll water it down. You want it nice and thick so it creates a nice protective hardening layer. And after I'm done that, I'm just going to trim that top piece of the sack. So it looks a bit more natural. And I'm also going to trim off the rest of the string. I'm also just flaying out the top here with my with my uh, sculpting tool. So it looks a bit more like an open top. And then I'm just going to affix that second sack, the smaller one, with a healthy portion of hot glue. And finally, as far as the sacks are concerned, I'm just going to create a top for the second, for the first sack rather. Roll up a piece of um, bunched paper towel and do the same as I did for the second sack, except this time I just want the top of it where it's kind of tied up.
All right, on to painting. Um, I'm gonna create a base coat, priming coat rather, of uh, black here. Just regular craft paint. Give it a nice shake and uh, a healthy coat of black is always where I start. Then on to some uh, raw umber as my uh, base coat. And uh, this is more of an overbrush again rather than a dry brush. Um, trying not to get it into all the recesses, but I would definitely want it to show up. As you can see, I want it to really catch that wood grain. Then onto my first highlight, I'm going to be using Nutmeg Brown, just a lighter brown than raw umber, kind of a medium brown. And this will be a dry brush. And so you want to wipe out, you want to put a healthy amount on your brush and then you want to wipe most of it off on a paper towel and then lightly brush the color over the crate here. You want to get it on all the corners and then as the color comes off the brush and there's less on there then you want to get kind of the middle areas you definitely don't want streaking here you basically want to nice dusting of the color And then here I'm going to use a soft suede as my second highlight. And again, you can use a dry brush technique here. And finally, I'm going to use a oatmeal color for an edge highlight. And I'm just going to focus on the very sharpest edges of the crate. Now on to painting the sacks. I'm gonna use that nutmeg brown again, and I'm gonna uh, base coat it in that color. A 
again in kind of an overbrush technique. And then my first highlight will be a golden brown. And this will be a dry brush. And then finally, an extreme highlight of antique linen. Again, a dry brush, and you're trying to get the uppermost extreme edges with this color. Now I'm just gonna go in with burnt sienna and I'm gonna highlight or, or pull out the uh, drawstrings on the sacks to make sure that they're noticeable and stand out from the rest of the sack. Just a quick highlight with antique linen on those drawstrings. Then the most fun part for me for any project is uh, kind of the final touches. I'm using Jim Holtz craft glassine paper here. It's kind of a wax paper. Um, that comes in a pad like that and basically I'm gonna cut a little section of it as you can see here and then you crumple it up and it really antiques it and gives it this crumpled kind of old look and as I open it back up you'll see it adds a number of creases in the paper And then I'm going to use a super fine marker to just draw kind of a um, inventory, as it were, for the uh, sacks and the, and the crate that are holding the lantern. Here, uh, grab some craft beads uh, from Michael's. Uh, and they were really nice. They had, they're kind of hollow. And I wanted to use uh, one for the LED or to cover the LED for the lantern. Um, as kind of a screen uh, to go around it, but then I realized it was just too small. So I actually pried them open using my sculpting tool and a small set of pliers. And then I'm going to use 
them as two halves that will surround the uh, LED for the lantern effect. Here I'm just putting some crazy glue on the bottom. And uh, then I'm going to stick it to the crate. Now I'm just creating the top of the lantern. And so I'm, I've created this little knot. Uh, I'm gonna cut off most of it in the end. And then I grab a, a little washer and I place the washer on it, give it a nice um, healthy coat of uh, hot glue to make sure that it affixes. And then I use um, crazy glue, which you don't see here, uh, to attach it to the top of the lantern. Then I just give the whole lantern uh, a healthy wash of about uh, 50, 50 or 60, 40 paint to water just to age it a little bit. Now using the same twine or string that I used for the sacks and for the handle of the lantern, I created a little coil of rope, adventure rope, you know, don't leave home without it. And um, it's going to attach it to the corner of the crate here with some hot glue. And here we're just going to take our little inventory document and we're going to uh, attach it to the crate using a little, a little bit of hot glue. And I wanted it to kind of overlap the rope. And then using a, another type of bead that I got from Michael's here, a little decorative bead, which looked great. It looks like an urn or some sort of um, 
bottle. Uh, added a little crazy glue to the bottom of it and uh, attached it to the crate as well. And you can basically use anything here. I went kind of wild, but I wanted to make sure they look like mundane items uh, on this. It, like it was in a storeroom or in a dungeon somewhere. And that's it for episode three. Thank you so much for watching again. And uh, I'd love to see what you all come up with. And as always, please subscribe and check us out at facebook.com slash to see what else we're up to.